Two, one. Well, wait. All right, and we are live. Welcome to another episode of Nadia's Entrepreneurial Corner. I am stoked to be sitting here with someone very special, the marvelous Sherry Wynn of the Winning Leadership Company. This is a very unique episode because obviously I talk to a lot of great people, but in Sherry's case, she is my leadership coach and she and I have been working together, I want to say what, like a, a year and a half now or something like that? Somewhere along that. Yeah, somewhere along that. We've had some great conversations. And We've so... had some great conversations and Sherry has guided me on my own leadership journey and has seen and heard a lot of crazy shenanigans that I have dealt with in my company and helped me navigate the, the stormy waters of entrepreneurship. And recently she wrote a book. I got to hold it up. Woohoo! The seven secrets to being a truly powerful leader, which I'm really excited that I am excerpted in there. It's a true honor. So with that, we're going to talk about, you know, kind of what is the state of leadership right now? I think there have been maybe more challenges recently in the last few years, perhaps because of COVID, maybe not. I don't know, but we want to unpack, you know, what does it really mean to be a great leader? And, you know, what are a few things that every business owner or entrepreneur should endeavor to achieve in their own leadership journey. But first, I'm going to pass the torch over to Sherry to tell us a little bit about her background and how she came to be in this position. Well, so, uh, you know, I, I'm a two-time Olympian national championship basketball coach. And uh, when I, about 11 years ago, uh, after 23 years of coaching college basketball, I thought, you know what? I've learned a lot of great information and I want to share it with more people because I was sharing it with, you know, 12 young ladies every year, which, were, which was very, very important. It was critical. But I knew from all my journeys that uh, I could give more. And so I thought, well, I'll be a motivational speaker. And I had no idea what that meant. And I didn't know that nine out of 10 speakers quit the first year they're in it because it's so hard and you don't get any gigs. And so I had to narrow down what was I really going to speak about because people don't hire just motivational speakers unless you're, you know, way up there at the top, like you're a big time celebrity or, you know, an actor or something like that. So I knew that I was a good leader after doing 23 years of, of coaching. And I thought, well, this is this is the this is my lane. So that's where I started. And then uh, the book I've written other books, but this book, I interviewed 200 leaders from, you know, Fortune 500 companies down to smaller, you know, businesses and really got their insights on what it was, what they thought great leadership was. 200. That is a lot. How long did that take? Well, the book took four years because between, you know, the you have to get the interviews and then you have to have the interview and then you've got to look at the material that people gave you and you got to try to fit it into some format according to all the information you got. So, you know, that was the that was a lot of work, actually. And I didn't have chat GPT, right? I didn't have any <laughs> AI tools. It's all guaranteed me. No ghostwriter. It was me. So, uh, you know, and then intentionally looking at every single a subtitle, every title, every word, every story. And uh, until I was just sick of it, like literally I was like, okay, I am so done with this. I don't care anymore. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a lot of people to speak to. How did you choose these individuals? Was it industry based? Was it more so relationship based? Like what was your process? So, you know, basically would send out a lot of, you know, through LinkedIn, everything was through LinkedIn and would send out, we'd look at the people, we wanted people from di different industries. Um, and, you know, we kind of just say, Hey, is this something that you're, you know, are you interested in having the conversation? So there's a lot of people who are like, no, like, psh, but the people that I found, and like I said, there are Beth Ford, uh, CEO of Lando Lakes, Fortune 500 company, Art Smuck, uh, former, he, he's retired now. He was a director. I mean, he's a CEO and founder, you know, CEO and president of FedEx distribution centers, 135 different sites that he was in charge of, 12,000 people. Um, Rosander Silveria, Silveria, who is Dale as senior vice president, 17 different countries. So from those people all the way to smaller entrepreneurial people like yourself, because I wanted a great view of leadership from all angles. Right. So and that's so what you were looking at. 
different industries as well. So you, it sounded mm-hmm. like you really wanted a diverse set of opinions or insights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because leadership is, you know, I wanted people to read this and go, it would apply to me. So, you know, not from some person who's a billionaire going, this is how I lead. Well, that perspective is different from the everyday leader. So people can use this. If you're a leader, a middle management person, you can use it. If you're if you're high up in an organization, you can use it. So it really doesn't have those kind of parameters of just that small group of people who go, ooh, like this is great, but you're a billionaire and I'm not. Right, right. You don't want people to feel like isolated or just like so disconnected from Mm -hmm. the advice. And so obviously the the crux of the book is these seven secrets. So Mm -hmm. were those identified prior to, like, did you already have those in mind prior to going into these interviews or did you kind of discover these in the process based off like identifying a few themes? Right. So I started asking questions. I had questions that I was asking. Everybody had the same question. And then I started diving deeper into the question. And what happened is, man, like I just got really interested in some of the things that were people were saying. I was like, ooh, that's cool. So about halfway through is when I got the titles of the chapters. And then I was more targeted in the questions because I really knew what it was that people we were looking for to make it even better. So I didn't have a good idea first. I wanted to know, like I said, I was about halfway through and I was like, okay, so now I've got this information. Let's make that. Let's now target more specific questions. So obviously, you know, going into this, you already have all of this experience and history as a leadership coach yourself. So Mm -hmm. did you already have an idea of what themes might pop up and what some of those secrets may be though? Or was it more like you discovered a lot of new nuggets that you weren't anticipating? I wouldn't say I I just, I, I would say I discovered some cool nuggets, right? And I also, it was more like I had the big overview and I knew some of the specific things that I would have said. But people were adding some things. I was like, ooh, that's really cool. Or, ah, like I haven't thought of it that way. So either they were giving me a nugget I haven't heard before or they were presented in a different way that enabled me to go, ooh, that's really cool. Like I haven't heard it you know, said that way before. So it's kind of both. Um, I wasn't really – I had done so much reading. So let's just – you know, I'm a reader. I'm an avid reader. Uh, and so I started my reading a long, long time ago. So it wasn't like I was blown away by people's responses because I already had a really solid background from all the depth of my own uh, reading and listening and uh, the you know the questions I asked from mentors and stuff like that. So I wasn't absolutely blown away. It was just like adding something that was like so specific in such a different way that I go, man, people need to hear it this way. Gotcha. Uh, like, what was the biggest takeaway after all of these conversations for you beyond? you know, sketching out these seven secrets more clearly. You know what was really cool? I'll tell you what was really cool, Nadia. So I've had experience of really poor leaders in my life, right? So coaches that I had that coached me, um, athletic directors that were above me, presidents at universities who were in charge, uh, you know, their chancellors or their whatever. And I was like, man, I'm going to get some, you know, I can't wait to hear these people. But what I discovered is the people that I talked to, were brilliant. And I don't mean brilliant in terms of like their um, IQ. I'm talking about their EQ. So what I loved was they were very self-aware individuals. They had delved a lot into self-awareness. And when I asked the question, what is the biggest challenge you've ever faced in leadership? And over 75% of people said me, like myself. So that kind of self-awareness just absolutely blew me away. Like I, their emotional, their emotional intelligence was extremely, extremely high. What challenges were you hearing that like were popping up frequently for people? You know, uh, well, I was going through COVID. So there was some of that COVID, you know, how do we, how do we make the connection with our teams now when we're doing, we're not face to face, how do we do that? Um, But that wasn't really the biggest, I don't think that was the biggest concern. I think that people had other concerns just, you know, how do we build a team? How do we get the team uh, cohesive? How do we how do we deal with some of these people excuses that people have today? How do we deal with some of that? Um, you know, but, you know, I, I think that the people I talked to were so on top of things that they weren't they weren't necessarily, you know, saying, oh, we got all these problems. They were saying, here's what we're doing with the solutions. Here's how we're figuring this out. I mean, they were so forward thinking in terms of solutions rather than sitting in a, in a problem, which was amazing again. And, and really generous, kind, 
uh, uh, you know, humble, humble people uh, who are at the very, very top, just extremely like, you know, you met these people like Rosandra, who is, you know, gorgeous lady, um, clearly at the top of her game, um, you know, over so many 17 countries, so down to earth and kind. Right. That is what I loved about the people that I interviewed because of who they were as people, not you know, they didn't let their title and their ego get in the pathway. Why is humility so important in leadership, being a good leader? Well, here's the deal. Like, you know, it's not about what you know, it's about who you are. Yes, you have to know things, but people, leadership is about people. Leadership is about relationships with people. And the most essential thing you can do is understand that every business is about relationships because relationships are the business. And the most important people in your business are your own employees, your own team members. So if you come and you've got this big old ego or you're attacking people or you're demeaning and demoralizing people or you need your ego fed, you need validation all the time. Look, you're really not there for other people. You're there for your own self. And people know that and can see through that. And man, once they, once they know that about you, they don't care about the company either. It's a paycheck. It's a job. It's like, get me in, get me out and I'm done. How many leaders have you encountered are like struggling with getting out of their own way? And especially with respect to ego. I would say a lot. I don't, I don't know, the <laughs> but I think it's something, it's a pathway that great leaders go through. That's what they go through. They go through this self-awareness. Uh, there's a guy that I interviewed who was really, I mean, great guy. And he was telling me his story about how he, uh, you know, work was everything. He spent all his time his work. And then he realized like he had a heart condition. Um, he wasn't, he didn't have balance in his life because everything is about work, work, work. And, you know, getting that done and getting the paycheck, get the title and climbing the ladder. And he said, you know, I had to have that come to a shift. I had to come to an awareness about, you know, balancing my life and how that actually showed up, made me show up as a better leader, you know, taking back, going back to my wife, going back to my spouse, taking the time to do that, going back and taking care of my body, you know, getting back to work out, eating better. He said that balance made me a better leader because I was so almost, you know, obsessive. I think that obsessive is the word. So obsessive with, you know, the game in front of me that right. uh, people were pawns, you know, my wife was yeah. a pawn and, and my kids were pawns. And, and so, you know, that kind of self-awareness journey that he had to go through to become a better leader.